Hello everybody and welcome back to Aaron's Tech Review and Tips and today is part two of our wall mounted wall case water cooled Raspberry Pi 2. We're calling it Project Overkill. Now everyone who's part of the Raspberry Pi community knows that the Raspberry Pi is a very petite object and uh, doesn't have a lot of uh, panache or it's not a Asus uh, um, ROG board or anything like that but it's a pretty amazing machine and I kind of wanted to showcase it and so I came up with the water-cooled wall case project and I uh, thought I'd bring you guys along with me as I go through this so the water cooled wall case raspberry pi 2 objectives are one build an overclocked raspberry pi case that begs the question of why in god's name would anyone ever do that well we went to the moon of course so why not uh build a freaking awesome pie two maintain a stable overkill of the cpu's clock uh, speed at a temperature that is smashing the typical heat sink mod that's out there. You know, glue the little heat sink on and how cute it is. Um, well, in its current state right now, my Raspberry Pi is running 1070 megahertz stable at about 27 degrees. Very quietly, and um, I can actually ramp it up, but a few programs kind of go to fart a little bit when I get about 1.2. So I think I'm kind of pushing the the stability part. So I backed it back down to where I know it's completely stable at all times at 1.07 megahertz, which is pretty awesome. Memory is also overclocked and uh, we'll talk about that as we further go into this case build. Number two, create an electronic piece of functional art. Yeah, right. Um, I just wanted to do it just to show off to my friends when they come in and they say, what the hell is that? And I get to say it's a Raspberry Pi running three operating systems and uh, it's pretty cool. Rasputin, RetroPie, and also the uh, Kodi, which is supplying the music to the background right now that you're listening to. The parts you're going to need for this build is one Raspberry Pi with everything included. That means you need the memory card, your OS, you're gonna need your power cables, blah, 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 blah. So those are things you're just gonna to have to get. And uh, I'm not even gonna go into that. That's a whole completely different video. If you are not comfortable with even understanding that, that then maybe you should not be attempting this computer mod. Number two, a piece of plexiglass. It's eight and a half by 11, about the size of a sheet of paper. And uh, that's where you're going to mount all of your hardware, your lines, and everything. So you're going to you're going to need that. You're going to need two 15 millimeter water blocks. Now I can supply you links. A lot of people have been asking me to put a kit together so you guys could actually build this at home. And uh, I'm not to that stage yet, but I'll give you some links right now where you could find some of this stuff. This is not a beginner level level project. This is probably intermediary um, and up to an advanced and depending on what you do with your your wall mounted water cooled project but you're going to need those water blocks no matter what you're going to need one coil about 10 feet long of four millimeter interior diameter micro tubing i went with kind of a red look my wife says it looks more like a raspberry not less of a raspberry more like a watermelon um uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder I like the red and green. I went with a green um, cooling fluid with it in order to, uh, you know, just kind of keep that green red vibe of the Raspberry Pi all alive. So it's up to you, personal preference. Micro water pump, minimum five volt micro water pump. Now, um, you're going to, if you're gonna power it off your Pi, five volts is gonna be fine. You can find those or I can supply that to you. Uh, just let me know in the comments below and uh, we can discuss all the parts and everything where I got them, where I sourced them and all that. Um, this five pump, a five volt water pump will run on your Raspberry Pi and you shouldn't have any problems at all. Um, you're going to need a water cooling reservoir. I went with a 90 millimeter, fits very nicely within that eight and a half by 11 
footprint and uh, will allow me to do a few extra things. And, and I'll show you in the pictures as we kind of kind of proceed through this video. An LED momentary switch on off reset. Uh, this is just really nice. So you're not having to unplug that uh, Raspberry Pi every time that you're trying to reset the, the operating system to do something else with your Pi. And uh, I, you know, this, this starts moving it into that intermediary uh, to advanced user interface, but uh, there are videos, and I can show you a video later on as I install my momentary switch. Right now I don't have it, I don't need it, so I haven't put it on yet, but as the case comes fully together, um, I will. I'll have it on there. The next thing is a 40 millimeter fan. Now I'm gonna actually go with two of these, one that will be mounted underneath the board towards the wall that'll actually be blowing onto the memory that's on the back side of my Raspberry Pi 2. Um, and then I'll have another one that will actually be mounted on the case, pulling air in and out of the case, actually into the case and out of the case. I like more of a pass through than a push in. Um, so that way I can continue to supply cool air inside the case, keeping these temperatures low. And, and like I said, I'm averaging about 27 degrees Celsius with this setup as it sits right now, which is far superior than any little water block that or not a water block, but a heat sink that you want to put on your Pi. And in an overclock situation, my Pi is going to last, last a lot farther, further than yours. Uh, I totally screwed that whole thing up, but you get the gist. You're also going to need a lot of assorted screws, zip ties, super glue. I would like to say with super glue, uh, go with a Loctite uh, super glue. That's the gel. It works extremely well. And, uh, you know, you, like I said, it'll bind your fingers. But the thing is, is it works really well with all the substrates you'll be using in this project. So go with the Loctite. In fact, I have it right here. If you guys want to, you know, kind of see that. I'll move forward. Blah, blah, blah. That's what you want right there. It's about four bucks. I mean, literally the whole project is going to cost you about, I don't know, $120, $140 to do this. Obnoxious, I know, but the whole thing about this project is being obnoxious. Don't you agree? I think so. So where is the current state of Project Overkill? There it is, guys, in all its beautiful glory. You see I've got tubes freaking going everywhere on this, and uh, um, it's, it's pretty nice. Now, right now, I haven't finalized all the mounting holes, um, haven't begun to build the box that goes around it, to allow the, the, just to showcase it. And as I get kind of further right now, this is the prototype board for the, the Raspberry Pi. And uh, I really like it. I hope you guys do. I think it's coming along quite quite well. Now here's the video. Now, don't kill me about the quality of the video because this is my first time ever attempting any, any video kind of like this. So, um, you know, just cut me a break, so. But as you can see, I've got loops going under, I got loops coming over, uh, you know, this, like I said, I want it to be a kind of a work of art. So when someone walks into the room says, oh my God, what is that thing? And I can say it's a $35 wall mounted PC that does multiple things that are really cool that your little PC can't do. Um, well, it can do probably even faster, but at least I would be saying I built this all the way through and uh, it just makes a nice conversation piece. Not that I need anything to make a conversation with, because I'm actually pretty good at talking. So, but it, it's pretty nice. Um, I'm very happy with it uh, so far. And it runs fairly quiet. Um, again, maintaining temperatures of about 27 degrees Celsius. 34 when I'm really pushing it hard. And I mean pushing it hard. Uh, it does stay cool. I don't need a reservoir, uh, uh, radiator, excuse me. I got the reservoir there, a radiator just because um, it just doesn't need it. I mean, that's taking it from overkill to obnoxious. And uh, that might be a future add-on. Let me make a note of that. Okay. So let's continue on. So part three of the video, we're pretty much done here for today. Uh, we'll finalize all the mounting locations and hardware um, and the cover that will be made for this. Um, I'll have diagrams and drawings for you guys to copy if you like on that so you can actually build this thing yourself. Um, I really encourage you guys to build this this project yourself because it is pretty cool. And um, 
you know, I really have enjoyed doing this. Uh, normally I do larger systems, uh, mini ITX and stuff like that, but this one's been a fun one to do. So please subscribe. If you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, thumbs up. And if you didn't, thumbs down. That way I can know uh, how, what to improve on. Just leave a comment down below, you know, and I'll respond to you. And, uh, you know, I do this because I enjoy doing this. So subscribe to my channel. Um, it does help me in the search results. And, uh, you know, um, I do it because I enjoy interacting with you guys. So thank you very much. And until next time, this is Aaron's Tech Review. And I'm out of here. You guys have a great one, okay?